Where are we heading up to now? We're heading towards the Williamsburg Bridge that goes over to Brooklyn, but uh, I'm sure we'll find a nice road like Eldridge Street that uh, a few years ago they had to uh, shut it down because they have supermarkets. Uh, they call them drug supermarkets. Oh you can go down and get anything you need here. Oh, that's pretty Very nice job. Just do oh, me a wow. favor. Get something to eat. No booze. Promise. Anything you say, sir. Good looking out. Have a nice day. Be safe. Be careful. Love you. Congratulations go out to Patricia Perry of Brooklyn. My latest guest down in Chinatown here. Yeah. They've been having uh, some gang wars down here. And uh, unfortunately, uh, they police themselves. And uh, they don't help. Uh, they don't help the police at all. And uh, you know these people are getting killed down here, and nobody will talk. Nobody will say anything. And they're very, very, very tough gangs and stuff. Go into restaurants and uh, you know shoot up. Uh, you know murder five or six people. Young kids too. The real young kids. Down here too. Is it governed by their parents? Do their parents run it. No, it's run by the old, uh, it's merchants associations that hire the Tong societies and the gangs are trying to take over from the uh, old Tong societies because there's a lot of people coming in from Taiwan and Hong Kong. It's a whole new game here in Chinatown. There's so much illegal money that's being pumped into this part of town, real estate being bought up. Everybody's trying to get their money out of uh, Hong Kong and Kowloon before, you know, it goes over to Red China. So they say the Doobies Club, well known in England, but when you look at it, in fact, it's a bit of a grot hole. <laughs> 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 totally. The CBGBs stands for Country Blue Grass. What blues. is it? Grotty and Blues. Country Blue Grass Blues. <laughs> Country Blue Grass Blues. No more. Old Hell's Angels hang out. Well, we are now going to walk into the famous place called the Danceteria, which, in fact, I've heard is the place that everyone goes to to sort of find out what's happening. So it's actually the first place you would go to and then talk to people and say, hey, what's happening sort of thing. Men. And um, this is the real sort of American cab driver here who sings. Groovy. This is a place where anything goes from umpa bands to Diamanda Gallus to the uh, funkiest thing uh, happening on the street. So we try to do as much variety as possible and to present music from all over the world. What records do you think that people really do prefer in New York? I mean, what is the real sort of lively stuff that they like it's, to dance to? Well, there's no, and there's no specific genre of music. Yeah. It's whatever, whatever's got got that magic feeling to it. What bands do you think have that magic feeling then? Well, right now, Juan Lo Cuango yeah. is big in New York, and then Africa, Bambada, and the Peach Boys. Yeah. They're, all, they're all different, but they all have that, that beat. What, what? Stuff that turns that floor on out there. Well, I really like sort of, let's say, transvestite singers playing accordion and things like that that are homely, that are reachable for everybody, that makes everybody feel like right. Yeah. Yes. Right. Are you going to put any scratch records on in a minute? Well, you can scratch with this one. Can There's you? no specific scratch record. I've got a show that stuff. Just find a hand clap somewhere. There are photographs of the late Klaus Naomi who died about two months ago. 
and I don't know if one of you would like to. And I, I, I'm not. You best explain really what what this small exhibition is about. Um, well, Klaus Nomi is an artist that is quintessentially from New York and represents a lot of New York life. And it's also, particularly with me, he's a friend. And I'm German, he's German, but we have not known each other in Germany. And uh, so I wanted to uh, show what uh, Klaus Nomi put together and what he was all about. Let's say the... the what is remains of him without a person. And it don't, I don't really want to give a nostalgic touch to this exhibition. I want it to be like something objective that people look at it and see this is what it is, what it was. Now, what do you reckon of that? Oh, the rock is great. It's a really good place. It's a lot different than Dance Eteria because the, the problem with Dance Eteria is that it's like a fashion club, you know? It's really fashionable, whereas Rocks is a lot more mixed. It's with the kids' party, you know? The breakers were there, the black kids, the Spanish kids, and also you get the few chic people, you know, Francesca Clemente, Bianca Jagger, that want to hang out there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> So they're all about the street gangs, are they still about? Well, they are still about, but uh, they don't exist in the form that they did in the late 60s and early 70s, where they were more about throwing down and, you know, the people from uh, Brooklyn would fight the people from the Bronx. It's not really, I mean, that still happens all the time, but ideally right now they're kind of developing into a new form, which has more to do with... Uh, uh, cultural, they've, they've evolved certain cultural forms that have to do with break dancing, you know, rapping, uh, going down to the Roxy, hanging out. Uh, people kind of might go down in a smaller crew now instead of like, you know, 500 kids going, showing up at a big show at an armory. You know, they might just be like 10 or 15 kids from a block and they all dance together, you know, and they might have worked out some things, you know, some steps or what have you. And the DJ is a guy named Africa Bambada. Uh, who's had two really big hits in this country. One is one was looking looking for the perfect beat was his last one, which is a really great record, I think. And the other is uh, Planet Rock. And th those were the records that probably more than any others were Planet Rock was the one which more than any other really started the whole hip hop explosion. Come on, Mr. Poppin, cause in the century there is such a place that creates such a melody. I walk by the plan of a method jam. They're a perky lot, aren't they? Anyway, in here, this is the Roxy. This is another um, sort of dance club. Got to bear in mind, there's not just dance clubs in New York. There's all sorts. You can have jazz clubs, rock clubs. There are, and um, I mean everything that you could possibly want. Also, the other major advantage is that they are open till four in the morning. Let's hope it's easier to get a drink in here and not all that loud disco music, okay? The Roxy. Well, in case Leslie didn't point it out to you, we're uh, in the uh, Roxy at the moment, at the bar, of course. Uh, and with me now is uh, Arthur Baker, who is one of the key producers of Rhythm Records in the city at the moment. Well, well first of all, Arthur, tell us what you've been doing at the moment. Well, at the moment, I've been trying to rest up a little bit. I have a lot of projects I'm working on right now. One of them being uh, the general public record I'm going to be doing 
with uh, Dave and Roger probably in the next month and a half or so. And I'm doing a project for Electra Circuit 2. And I'm also producing my wife, keeping it in the family for Electra Records also. So I've been really busy. That's, that's all, for the, all for the best. The, the other thing that I heard was that you can, you'll, you'll do a mix of something in the studio and then you'll bring it into a club uh, like this to test it out. Give us the rundown on that. Well, for instance, on, on the New Order record Confusion, I probably did like 15 or 20 different mixes. I kept going into the clubs and testing them out, and they really didn't live up to what I want, so I'd go back in the studio and really test it and use that as really the barometer of whether the record was where it should be as far as the people were concerned. I don't feel it ever got to the point where I wanted it to be, but I feel that the mix I put out was best for what the people wanted. So. When you went back in the studio, what did you find was lacking? Was it the bass drum or the, the snare drum or something like that? It was that? usually something to do with the kick drum, trying to get the right level and the right feel to the kick drum. Because in records that I make, the dance records, the kick drum is really the kick and snare most important thing. If you don't have the power, then you can lose the dance floor, and that's what these records are about. studio monitors well I feel that a lot of times records I, I feel hearing on the radio or in the studio don't sound that well come to life in the in the uh, in the clubs and when we make the records you know that's why I test them out because I really don't care how they sound at, at home as much as how they sound in the club yeah. I'm more interested in the club yeah. well of course the other question is is what would be the next because things have become more and more rhythmic um, uh, where would you say going? Do you think it uh, will end up with just complete rhythm records with no melody whatsoever? Well, I mean, rap records right now are pretty much at that point. If you have the right beat, you can the record can get over just on the beat and the chant. I feel that uh, I actually i am trying to get away from that. I'd rather have melody. I'm trying to write songs, real songs, and, and putting them over that kind of driving beat. And that's what I try to do with Confusion and IOU and any other records I've been doing, trying to have a marriage between the, the drum sound and, a real, and the real melodies. Here's standing next to me is the very beautiful Nona Hendrix. 
Well, I was earlier. <laughs> no, you should have. <laughs> Tell me about the Roxy. Well, it's a place that you can come to, and uh, after a week of being, uh, I guess, a busboy, uh, a waitress, a hairdresser, a dancer, a mother, a husband, uh, you know, any of those things, and, and get it off, get rid of it, you know, and dance it away. Uh, get excited about watching other people uh, come here and dance the breakers, the... Um, it, it, that's, what it, that's what it really is about. What, what is your <laughs> definition of b-boys? There's a whole lot of them out there on the floor. <laughs> I, I don't, I, uh, being a, a simple English woman, you see, I don't know, we haven't, I don't think we've actually linked on to b-boys. Can you tell me what it's all about? Well, b-boys, it's an attitude um, more than anything. It, it's a street attitude. It's a survivor's attitude. And it's, it's a sort of very loose, very... Um, demonstrative, you know, and a lot of them are the people who, who break um, on the kids on the corner. That's the dancing of spinning, spinning on your head. On the head, spinning on their arms, and it's a street attitude, really. Right. And some of them are beautiful, some of them are bad, some of them are butch, some of them are brainy, some of them are, you know, and that's why I call them B-boys. System. And at 10 to 4 in the morning, I think really one has to have the best sound system to uh, really appreciate exactly these rhythms. Because at 10 right. to 4 in the morning, you need to be uplifted. So yes. we're going to go in here and be uplifted. them this question tell me this it seems that each a lot of the bands involved in this music are based around the clubs 
I mean, so each band has its pub and its DJ. Would you say that was true? I'll start with you. Sometimes. Not exactly in our case, because the music has to have an experience or an appeal bigger than just one club. But basically, we come here and enjoy ourselves here in a party atmosphere, and then the music comes from that as well. And it all has an inspiration from that point. So I would agree with it on that level, sure. Do you every week stay up till 5 o'clock in the morning and come in here? When I can, yeah. yeah. All the time, yeah. This is a great place to be, so we get here whenever we can. It's wonderful. The other thing, it doesn't, it seems to be a very healthy sort of thing, like a no, no drinking and lots of exercise. Would you say that was uh, true? Yeah, it is. I think so. Drink, booze makes people react different yeah. to music. Here they hear it better and they enjoy the dance. Well, Peach Boys, is there anything that you'd like to add to that? Oh, a point. Oh, Bogner Regis, you know who you are. Hi. <laughs> Bogner Regis. We love you. Bogner Regis, 5 o'clock in the morning is nearly as exciting as this, let me tell you. <laughs> Then, well, I didn't think much of the apples or the pretzels. No, and they didn't actually serve any liquor or, or beer or anything because it was past time, which was a bit of a letdown. Yeah. And they're all a bit over over healthy in there. However, the thing to remember is, of course, this is one way you can spend an evening on your, in New York doing all this. But there are all sorts of other clubs that deal in rock music or whatever you wanted to see, really. So, really, you could spend your whole life staying up to five o'clock in the morning. But I don't think we'll be doing that. Instead. Time to go home now, I think. No.